So I've got a new toy and it's this LED. It's not an ordinary LED, it's a special LED because you can stick it directly to mains. Or actually you can stick any LED directly to mains, but most of them will blow up. This one is redesigned for AC mains voltage. It's 20 watt and it's running of 220 volts. And it's surprisingly cheap, it cost me only one dollar ten cents including shipping. And it doesn't look so complicated. It contains a lot of LED chips, probably in series, a bridge rectifier, and two chips, some capacitor, and there are two resistors under the resin, and that's it. There's the bridge. Some chips. There is something, it's just an SMD jumper. It's a resistor with a zero resistance. There are probably a few other components. There's one resistor. It's to set the current of the LEDs. And the other resistor is somewhere here. Can you see it? So there are really no other components in it, just a bridge, two chips, two resistors and a capacitor and of course the LED chips. The chips are BP5132H and the resistors are 7.5 ohms. Let's try to test it. This is definitely not the safest way. It works. I can't run it for long because it needs a heat sink. And by the way, this is a shitty Chinese extension socket. The current is about... 96 milliamps. Okay, can I use a resistor in series to see the chips at low brightness? Yes, I should find a better resistor now. What about this one? And if you see me doing something, it's always an example of what you should never do. It works. So we can see the chips. There are 78787 and 78787. In total there are 74 LED chips. So I will try to make a schematic of it. So the schematic is ready and it's really simple. The mains comes in, it goes through a bridge rectifier and then through all those LEDs in series. Then it goes through those two current regulating chips. They work in parallel, so they work just like one more powerful regulator. There's a capacitor in parallel, probably to prevent some high frequency oscillations. And those current sensing resistors have 0.6 volts across them, so let's try to calculate the current. The current is I equals U over R. And this is 0 0.6 volts divided by 7.5 ohms. And this is 0 0.08 amps or 80 milliamps. So the current of each regulator is 80 milliamps. But because they are working two in parallel, the total current is 160 milliamps. There are 74 LEDs in series and a voltage drop of a white LED is about 3 volts. So the total voltage drop is 222 volts. So the power of those LEDs should be 222 volts times 0 0.16 amps or 160 milliamps and this is 35.5 watts. But because there is no filter capacitor here, the LEDs are not on all the time. So this is just a peak power, but the average power is going to be lower. So let's imagine a sine wave. After rectification it will look about like this. 
the peak is 310 volts and the voltage drop of the LEDs is 222 volts. The LEDs will be on only when the voltage is higher than the voltage drop of the LEDs. And it is from here to here and from here to here. And this area is equal to the power of the LED. And this one is what's going to be dissipated in the chips. This is the power dissipation. So this is the useful power going into the LED chips and this is the power being wasted. It's dissipated in the regulators. So at this point we are using 222 volts out of 310 volts and the efficiency will be 222 divided by 310 and this is about 72%. But the voltage is not always at the peak. So for example at this point or this point the regulator is dropping almost nothing. So the efficiency is almost 100%. So the efficiency in average may be about 80 or even 85%. And that's really not bad for a linear regulator. The disadvantage of this LED is the flicker. The LEDs are on only for this time and this time and they are off for the rest of the time. The flicker is not visible to a human eye but it's visible for a camera. The light output looks about like this. It flickers at 100 Hz and the light is on for about half of the time and it's off for the other half. The current through the LEDs looks about the same. It's about 160 milliamps, but only for about half of the time. Those LED chips look like a good quality because they light up evenly even at a very low current. Now it's running at about 10 microamps. Poor quality chips usually don't light up evenly at a very low current. Let's try to stick it into a variac. It just lights up at about 127 volts. When I move my finger I can see the flicker just like the camera. Now let's connect it to my oscilloscope using my mains to breadboard interface. So this is my memory oscilloscope and let's display the current. It uses a TV as a display. So here's the current. We can move it. Here you can see the positive half cycle. Zero and negative half cycle. The rise and fall is not exactly vertical but almost. When I zoom it out it looks about like this. Let's zoom it in. The off time is about 4 milliseconds. And the on time is about 4.5 milliseconds. Let's zoom it in even more. And the rise and fall is about 7 or 800 microseconds. So the current looks about like this. It's 4.5 milliseconds on in both half cycles and 4 milliseconds off. And it rises or falls 0.75 milliseconds. Let's try to measure the voltage on the regulator. That's the voltage on the regulators. And finally, this is the voltage of the LEDs. It rises until it reaches the voltage drop, then it stays steady for a while and then it falls. So it's really nice and I like it. It's a very simple and clever design. 
but on the other hand it flickers a lot and the heatsink is isolated from mains just by a layer of paint, so the heatsink definitely has to be grounded. But in some applications like street lights, those LEDs can be really useful. So this is Diet Gun Wild and see you in my next videos.